Please give a round of applause for Kun Henry, ครับ So the top, I'm still Henry Lee. Okay, that's all the Thai I know. <laughs> so the whole search, this talk will be in English. Okay, everyone can understand, right? Okay. So, a super short introduction. I do not work in life. Okay. Uh, I'm from Malaysia. I'm from Malaysia, and I'm a Google developer expert in web technologies. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the Firebase I mean SDK. And of, of course, I'm a front end developer. I'm working in Thailand right now. Okay, so that's the introduction. So, the most important thing, Firebase. Anyone here doesn't know what is Firebase? <laughs> if not, why you are here? Okay, so you know Firebase is awesome, you know Firebase is super cool. It allows you to build awesome application. Very easy, right? Anyone here don't like Firebase? No? No? Everyone loves Firebase, right? Okay, so you heard from our previous section, you know how awesome is Firebase. You can use this for machine learning, do it for Flutter, iOS app, Android app, web app. You can do it for anything, even for game, right? It has the Unity SDK, so you can do it for your game. But that's a front end, right? That's a client side. You use it for all the client side. So this you look something like this. Uh, this I think Jerawa asked this question before. Anyone? Any, who is front-end developer? Front-end developer plus mobile developer. Okay. So, you know front-end, the Firebase client-side SDK is very powerful. You can use it to do everything. Real-time database, Firestore, cloud messaging, Fire, cloud storage, what else? MLK, and more. So, Firebase works on this kind of platform and this is just a few examples. It works on C, C++ and more. So, this is not only what Firebase can do and what, where Firebase can run. So, any back-end developer? Okay. Yes, so that's what back-end developers do. They face behind the monitor and they write code. So, they are very, very smart. They can code without looking at the screen. Right. They are important, they are genius, right? So, you, you hear a lot. Okay, uh, by the way, anyone here tried Firebase I mean SDK before? That's a lot. Okay, so, you use the client side SDK, right? But sometimes you want more feature, you want to extend the function what Firebase client SDK can do. So, if you're going to do that, you need to create your own backend write the backend code and integrate with Firebase. So in this case, you need something called Firebase and SDK. So by using this, you can extend the function of Firebase to your own backend and you can create even more function. Let me show you some example. So before that, what is Firebase SDK? It's basically SDK. It allows you to let your backend connect to the Firebase directly. So it allows you to do a lot of stuff and you can run it for almost all your own type of server. So if your if your company has your own server, you can do it. If you're using Google Cloud, you're using all the like, platform as a service, all the infrastructure as a service, you can run Firebase there. Or if you're more on server serverless platform, if you're more on serverless ar ar architecture, like if you use Google Cloud, Google Cloud functions or the Amazon Lambda, and yes, you can run the Firebase and SDK on this kind of platform. So, if you have server, you can run Firebase and SDK. And it works on a lot of language, which I'll show you later. So, what can you do with the Firebase and SDK? Can you access to Firebase server itself? Can you hack Firebase using the SDK? Okay, so, by doing this, you can do a lot of stuff. You can, you can actually have more control on what you can do from the Firebase client SDK. And by using the Firebase and the SDK, the Firebase itself actually relaxes some security rules. It means you have basically admin access, full access to all the Firebase feature. So, let's show you some example. This is the whole list, all the feature what you can do using Firebase. But I'm going to talk about, show you some example what you can do. So, let's say you are admin, right? 
admin, remember you are admin. Admin can do everything. Using files, the real-time database or the Firestorm. If you are admin means you have full access to read and write. You can do whatever you want. If you store the password in a plain text in the database, means the admin can access it and read it. Of course, please do not do that. Please encrypt the password. First, but that's not only what you can do. If you are using, um, let's say, Firebase authentication, and this is where the Firebase admin has become become very, very useful. You want to have multiple type of user in your app, right? In your app, maybe you have paid subscriber and free user. We have admin and normal user. We have different type of user. But if you only use the client SDK, which is not easy for you to set this kind of stuff. By using the admin SDK, you can set, which I'll cover later, you can set basically a custom groups, custom rules for the user linked to the Firebase authentication. So you don't need to create a new database just to store the user profile. You can just extend the feature what the Firebase authentication gives you. What else? And of course, this is the one of the popular things you can do using the MSDK, which is the cloud messaging. So if you want to send a message, uh, send a push notification to your user, you can just, I can say, like two lines of code, and you can send the user, send the notification to everyone in your subscriber list. Um, basically, this is what you can do, and of course, you can do is basically you can extend the log authentication. So right now, uh, Firebase actually offer like Google login, Facebook login, Twitter login. If you have, you have your own your, your own social media platform or any login system, you can integrate into this Firebase authentication. So it can be very 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 very, very powerful. So speaking of powerful, fun fact about me: I just moved to Thailand six days ago. So I'm still in tourist mode. I'm looking for all the tourist space, all the food. So uh, that's what the top crowd, right? The top rice, right? It's amazing. And of course, this one is still my favorite. You can find this tom yam everywhere in Malaysia. And so popular that I create a fire tom yam application just for myself. <laughs> so I have a list of tom yam to know where should I go next. So it's a list of restaurants with some picture, which uh, yes, this database is not the real one. Okay, I just get some Thai restaurant and put some random Tom Yam Tom, Tom Yam photo. Um, one thing after I developed this thing, I realized Tom Yam is YUM. I don't know, I thought I used YAM. Okay. okay, so that's the file Tom Yam. It's a, it's a web application which I created for myself, by me. So, Firebase I mean, I mean, SK, you can run it on everywhere. I mean, everywhere is this five platform, which is currently officially supported by Firebase. So you can write on Java, you can write on Python, you can write on Node.js, you can write on GoLang, if you're always using Go, and can you write on C Sharp. But one small thing, if you're always using C Sharp, uh, right now the Firebase MES SDK the support is not that good yet. It's coming soon. More features you can do, as I showed you in the table previously, I know. But Basically, the most powerful one you can use is the Node.js server. I'm a web developer, I'm familiar with JavaScript. So, of course, I developed this Fire Tom Yam using Firebase ME SDK Node.js. So, Node.js, okay? Sorry, the rest, but Node.js. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, uh, as you, you make sense why I use the Node.js later. Okay, so, if you are a web developer, then you know. To use this kind of SDK, you just always need to npm install everything, right? Of course, you can use yarn, it's alright. I don't use yarn or npm, and of course, you can just download the zip file and extract yourself, which no one can do that. Okay, please do not do that. Okay, so in this case, since it's a Node.js, you just npm install, done. We got the, we got the Firebase and the SDK inside our, our server. Already. So the next thing is to do is to create, of course, you need to open up the editor, set up the server. Once those things are done, you can initialize the Firebase admin SDK. The code is surprisingly simple. This is how you can basically get full access to the Firebase admin SDK, to the Firebase, Firebase admin. So, the first line is basically you import the Firebase admin SDK. The second line, the third, the second line is to get the service account, which you can get from the Google Cloud console. 
export the service account key in the JSON format, include in the Firebase. Initialize the app using that and the speed done. You set up the whole thing. Right? Looks easy, right? But, 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 but. What if I can make your life easier? Whether it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, seven lines of code, right? Make it shorter. So, yes, we need a book smarter. Right? To make our life easier. So remember, I, I told you, you need to go to down, the cloud console and download the JSON file, which I hate that. But I hate that step, because yeah, I need to switch, to, to switch back to my browser. So to solve the problem, is actually not really solved. To help you, you have an alternative. is to use cloud function for Firebase. So as I mentioned earlier, you can run uh, MS data on the server's architecture or the server's platform. In this sense, we are running on like, cloud functions, which is running on Google Cloud, extremely fast. Right? It's free to use with a star behind. Right? You can use it for free, yes, with certain limitation, but most probably you won't hit the limitation. Yeah. So it's free to use, so why not use that? So since the cloud functions is running at the same, if, if, if you need to do something like this, you need to create a Firebase project, and make sure the cloud, fu cloud function and the database, the authentication are in the same project. In this case, you can just use the function dot config Firebase. We from seven lines to three lines. So our code is shorter and it in English the SDK in the, in the same method. So we, in this case, we don't need to put the JSON file. Easier life, yes. Okay, right, so show us an example. So, Firebase and SDK can do a lot of stuff, but today I'm just going to show you a few because I don't want to show you all, which you can just Google yourself. Right. But I just show you the basically the most, I think it's the most useful one, which when you develop a, develop a very, let's say a simple app, this will be very useful. So the first one is basically if you have to create a custom permission model. So in other words, you have to have a regular user, uh, any user, or you have to have, like if you're building your own Spotify, you have a free user and a subscribe uh, paid user. So, how can you do that using Firebase authentication? It can be very, very simple. It's very, very simple. So, what you need to do is then what they call is the custom claim and the security rules. Two things. Right. So, I believe all of you are familiar with this code. This one is the Firebase rules, which you can work on basically on. This one is the example from the real time database. For the Cloud Firestore it looks a little bit different, but that's really the over the whole thing, the whole idea is still the same. So in this case, you may lose some you, you may see something new. So in this case, we have write, we have read is true means anyone can read. But in the write we have set the authentication dot token dot admin set to true. So everyone must have the token of admin, which is true, then it only can have the access to read this part. If not, they can't read it. So Using this method, you can create a different type of rules, a uh, different type of rules to your application. Not only user, not, not only limited to two rows. You can have M, M, as more as possible if you, if you want. So this one is the rules. You set this, but this one the token dot admin. You need to set it yourself. How you can set it. So first, let's talk about the UI. So Go back to our UI, since I'm an admin, right, I can add another ad admin so they can access to this system and can uh, write and put basically uh, insert a new restaurant into the app. So in this case, basically a form, so we can have a new admin address and press a button, it will submit an email address and magic will do the server will do some magic and make it happen. So JavaScript front end, so it's very, very simple. So when you submit the form, you basically write to the database, so you push the you the push the email address to the database inside the children call admin. So once we push that, so remember I'm using a uh, cloud function for Firebase. So there are a few methods you can trigger your Firebase function the uh, cloud function. So one type is to use the HTTP request means you just access through a normal URL, or another method is through this kind of trigger. So in this case. The Firebase trigger function will automatically run if 
In this case, we are using the database, real-time database. So you can see on the first and the second line. The first line is the which I can look at the screen. Okay. So you can see the first line is specific if database, if Firebase real time database, something happened in the in the in the position of admin and the email, right? So on the second line you can see on create. Means if the new email is created in the list, we do we run this function. So in this case, what we will do is what we want to do is we want to remember we got the dot dot token dot email. We want to set that to true. So in this case, we are using something called set custom user claims. So we set it, we need to get a user ID, which is uh, the user unique ID, user ID or UID. Get the UID, set the admin to true. But before you can get the UID, remember we put in the email. So we need to get the email and basically convert it to get the UID. So in this case, we can just use this one. So we can use this admin.org get user by ID and put in the email address. So from here you can get the full information of the user by email and you will return a lot of stuff to perform sure the name if there's a full number, you get the full number, you check if the user verified or not. And of course the most important thing, the most important stuff you want to get is to get the UID. So you can use the user record dot UID and get the UID we can set it through the set custom user plan. So by using this we are able to set it. So I can show a quick demo. Okay, it's time to find where is my cursor. Ah, it's here. Okay. You see the screen, right? Okay. Okay, so we have this one. Okay, right now I have two accounts. This is the second account. So what I can do is I can go to new the HTML. So I have a form which, in this case, only admin can write to the database. So at first step, basically I need to log in first. Okay. Hmm, internet. Okay, so I log in to another account. Okay, so now what I need to do is basically put, put in some random stuff. If I press submit, you, if, you, if you can see, you can see it's, it's showing permission denied. So it means in this case, this user doesn't have admin access. So what we can do is go back to the account which has admin access, then we can have new admin.html. So in this case, we can put in my email. So if I press the create new admin, you basically add this email to the Firebase database and the cloud function like right now is running and set this user as an admin. So when we go back to this page, we sign in again. So I sign in as the second admin. So I press continue. When I press submit, please work, please. <laughs> Ah, see, it's added successfully. It's because right now this account is an admin. So, by doing this, we can create multiple roles. So, in this case, we just create a new admin. And so, once this account has become an admin, we can full access to this application. So, we just basically broke the application with the ugly, not existing image. Okay? So, this, the first thing. Let's go back. Okay, so just a request, what we did just now. So basically, we create a new admin, use the custom claims, custom roles to get and set the token as admin, set the true. Once the part is done, the second part is to remember to update your Firebase database rules. So we can have the normal access. So in this case, we set the right to authentication token admin true. Okay, if true, if the, if it's an admin, then only has access to right. So, that's a Firebase authentication. The next part, Firebase Cloud Messaging. Anyone here use FCM? Anyone here still using GCM? No? No one using GCM anymore, right? You need to upgrade, you know, right? <laughs> okay, please use FCM. Uh, by the way, that's actually a joke of 
what we say FCM in my university. FCM stands for Faculty of Creative and Multimedia. So that's the time from GC, the GCM to FCM. I said, by my FCM, I go, I'm moving to FCM. Then my friend, all oh, my friends thought, I'm moving to the faculty. I'm not, a, I'm not from the faculty. But people thought I'm going to, to that faculty. Wait, by the way, so you know why it's cloud messaging? You know why it's FCM? It's very, very useful. And to make it even more useful, anyone use FCM with topics? FCM topics. So you push the you push the notification through the topic. So I've seen two people raise their hand. So it's an it's an actually a better way. What I can see is you can customize like let's say uh, okay let's say you're building a weather app, right? How you can set like if um, how should I say that? okay? So you are building a weather app a, a weather app. You you have a lot of user, but some user only want to receive. Notification on certain on certain certain stuff like only like for me if I want to get a notification I want to get the notifi notification of the weather of Bangkok but some people want to get the weather of Tokyo but you can't send a push notification to everyone with the same stuff so here's the topic what you can do is you can set topic so you can set if like, let's say the topic name is Bangkok if you only send a notification to that user that subscribe to the Bangkok notification. So it's what we call topic. So in this case, in this application is when I create a new restaurant and when I press the submit, it will send a notification to the user. So it looks something like this. I show you the demo first. So I can go here. So I need to turn off. Do not disturb. Okay, so when I press submit, this works again. Okay, so edit successfully. I can see something come up. Right. Uh, I believe you can't see that it's because it's very very small. But basically, what you can see is basically it's showing we just added blue elephant to our collection and join. So what you can see, you actually can get the text. So it's more customizable. So we can show blue elephant, which is the restaurant name. I think it's somewhere in Bangkok. That's Google search that you So this is what I can do using the NSDK. So how you can do that is again I've used the five part function again. We make the code so short, and that's all the code you need to do. This one is okay. This one is which one? Okay, this one is the client side. Means you have two two part. One part is the web application. You need to subscribe to the uh, subscribe to the topic. So in this case, is if any web developer here, web developer that use push notification before. Okay, that's not a lot of people. Sure. Okay, so basically, if you are web developer, you should know that something called service worker. If you have to have push notification feature in your web application, then you need to use service worker. But that's not important. This is not a web section. But we focus on the two highlighted part. So basically, the messaging dot request permission is to ask the browser request a permission to the what usually you get a very annoying notification uh, no, the very annoying call all right I decide want to read uh, access to the not notification microphone this kind of stuff and once you get once the user press yes or accept then the browser can proceed to the next step is to use the messaging dot get token so in this case it will generate a token which you need to save the, this token. To the database. So once you save the token to the database, from the back end, you can use it to send notification to the user. Okay? So once we got the token, we save this to the Firebase database. So once we got the token, so once we got the token, we store it for future. So right now I create a new restaurant in the app. So again using the same method you see just now, so we got a function database. The item inside item ID which is our restaurant, new restaurant, and if the new restaurant is new created, then we can use the admin. We can send a message. We can send a message in this case, a certification, and send it. But before we send it, we need to choose who we want to send and what is the board, the content of the message. So, okay, so it's right here. So you can see the the messaging, the MSG, MSG, the food one. The MSG is equal to any messaging message. 
So in this case, we set two things. One is the notification, which is our content that you see on the notification itself. And the second one is the interesting one, which is the topic. Okay? So if the user, you can set. So before that, we actually we straight away set, set, what is that? So we set the token to the database. Actually, we just set it to store inside the blank. We set a new restaurant there only the token. And in this case, we just basically we get the token. So, what in this case you do is basically the any messaging message. You send the notification to all users that subscribe to the top, to a new restaurant topic. So, once you do that, you use this admin messaging dot send. The moment you press it, you send the notification to all your users. If you're on testing, please think before you run this function, okay? Else your user most probably will kill you. Alright, so once you run it, in this case, its cloud function is automatically triggered. So it automatically send a push notification to something like this. Okay? For production, please remember to add the icon to this thing. Okay? Make it look nice. And of course, um, if you are you any designer here, no? UX designer or developer that have basic knowledge of UX stuff. Anyone horrible in US? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you are good in US or you, you should know this, when you're sending push notification, please do not send too generic message. If possible, customize your message. So in this case, the fire restaurant is basically it's a dynamic content. So the user don't, don't always get the same message. The user can know what is that before they click on it. So it's not a basically a spam notification. Right. Have a designer do this. Okay, so we, just I show you what you can do with Firebase and the SDK. One is to do the custom roles. Another is to do the cloud engine. There are more stuff like this more. You can do with Firebase and the SDK. So one of my favorite things what I can do is TensorFlow. Anyone here know what is TensorFlow, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so it's the scale that machine learning stuff. Of course, you can use MLK if you want. But sometimes you have to have your own full control. So what you can do is you can link a server which runs the TensorFlow to, to Firebase using the Firebase ME SDK. So what you can do is basically you can get the data from Firebase ME SDK. One side, you can write every 24 hours. Once there's a new data, you can run it, get the data through, get the data from the real-time database or the Cloud Firestore, and link it back to TensorFlow so you can train it and update your database. So in this case, few example like you can create a rec recommendation. So you can recommend the user like what restaurant they should go this week or new song, the fashion stuff. So these are few example what you can do with TensorFlow. And another one, search. Search is extremely useful and more, one of the important things you need to have in your app. Right, if you're building an e-commerce site, the just like restaurant app, you should have a search. So the user can search or at least do some filtering. So you can use something called like this thing is called Elastic Search, it's been a long time. Right? So they have a very good integration with their Firebase and this thing. So you can use this to create search feature in your app. So you can search basically in this case you can search all the data from the Firebase real-time database and the Cloud Firestore. So this is what you can do using Firebase and the SDK. So I think basically that's all for me. Right. Okay. okay, so basically that's all. You can find me on Twitter. If you have any question, you can find me on Twitter, which is this one, Henry Lee 96. I will be there quite a bit. Uh, any question? But if you have a question, please ask in English. <laughs> Could you please tell me uh, how to use the asset search in, in Firebase? Because in Firebase, uh, to be honest, it's not a good asset search in the like of the group. Can I 
answer already. Yes, you answer for me. Okay. <laughs> so if you would like you to can do, answer it, Kai also. I think you would like to do the whole Texas in the real time element, right? Or maybe half by so, right? Um, now in the cloud function for my base sample, source post in the GitHub, they provide you that um, cloud function integrated the five base of cloud by so with the Alvolia or the uh, Alvolia. So you can um, look at the uh, sample code and just follow the sample code from the five base team. No? Uh, yeah, it will try. Yes. And actually, there are there is a one guy from the KUTT. His name is Pashala uh, in the Firebase Developer Group. If you can find him in Firebase Developer Group, there's uh, three thousand people in, in this group. Uh, Pashala provide a blog post about how to uh, do the full text set with the real time table. He used an Elasticsearch and Firebase real time table for cloud function for Firebase. It's that cool. Thanks. Okay, I think if you have any question, you can ask me later. Right, okay, so thank you. Thank you. Uh,